Hello, you're on Pablo Spot. I'm George. This is Back to Basics on System Tools. And today is a show and tell on how I use Git, some basic Git hooks, and syncing local development with remote repositories. If this video and this channel line up with your interests, hit the subscribe button and join me in this journey of learning by doing. So, let's do this. Some housekeeping items before we begin. I'm using Windows system and the things that I'll be showing today involve tools like OMIZSH, ASDF, and VS Code, which I have set up in this series. If you do not have these tools, head over to the episodes which you can access right here. Make sure you install and set up OMIZSH, ASDF, and VS Code, and then head back to this episode. So, firstly, Git is a very powerful tool for version control and it's widely used in the software development ecosystem and it's critical component of OSS or open source software and a very powerful tool for collaboration. But before I show you how Git is a very powerful tool for collaboration, I'll show you how it can be very useful for me as I write code. I use Git every time I start working on a new project. So let's say I want to start working on a project that involves writing infrastructure code. I'll start by creating a directory where I'll put all my code in. And I'm in the habit of writing all my code inside a directory called workspace. So I do have one that already exists. And then inside the workspace directory is another directory called projects. So I'll see the two projects. And then inside the projects, I'll create my project directory and call it sample. Now I cd to that new directory and then launch my VS code from this directory. So from this point on, most of what I will do will be happening inside VS code. So let me switch to my VS code. And before I start writing any code, I'll open terminal from here. And if I list down all the files and directories in here, including the hidden ones, I'll issue ls a. And at this point, my project directory is totally empty. Now, I'll initialize git on this directory by running git in it. This will create my local git repository. If I list all files and directories in here again, it will show a new hidden directory called .git, which was created when I ran git in it. And if you notice, my terminal is also updated with git-related icons and useful information. So it shows that I'm on the master branch. Now, I'll create my very first file on my project. I'll create a readme file in the root of my repository. So with that file created, I now need to run a git command to check for any file changes that need to be staged by running git status. So let me close this explorer and then run git status. All the ones that are marked red are unstaged files. And at this point, I've only got one file that needs to be staged. If I'm ready to commit my changes into my local repository, I'll run git add and the file name. Now, if I run my git status again, the red marks are gone and I have files marked green this time, which means all my changes have been staged and ready to be committed into my repository. So to commit, I run a git commit command. So this is now a good time to introduce you to a VS Code extension that I find very useful in tracking all git changes. And this is git graph. So I'll head over to extensions and then search for git graph. Then select that and install. So once installed successfully, I'll have a git graph on my status bar, which is right here. And if I click that, I'll get a list of all the commits that I've done on my local repository. So let me close all these unnecessary windows in here. Before I go any further, I would like to rename the current branch to main, not just because I want my space to be neutral and avoid reference to the controversial master word, but also be able to push this to GitHub later on. So to rename my current branch, I'll run this command. And then on my terminal, my current branch now says main. And if I launch my Git graph, master is now replaced by main as well. Next up, hooks. I want to create my own custom set of hooks on this local repository. So what I'll do is I'll create a directory called hooks. And then I want to configure my hooks path on my local repository to point to this directory. So I have to run this command. 
And if I want to verify that has been applied to my local repository, I'll run this command. And core hooks path is set to point to hooks. So in this project, I'll be writing Terraform to write infrastructure code. So I need to pre-hook two things for my project. First, I want an automated formatting of my code. And second, I want a validation process of my Terraform code. So let me open this explorer and inside my hooks directory, I'll create a file called pre-commit. Let me close this explorer, adjust my terminal, and the contents of my script will look like this. Then I need to update the permission to this file to make it an executable. I've made new set of changes, so it's time to check for anything that needs to be committed to my local repository. So back to my terminal and I'll run git status. And I've only got one set of changes that need to be staged, which is hooks. And then I'll commit this change. So my git commit command failed and nothing is committed to my local repository. But there's an error message here. And the error message suggests missing Terraform binary. And so if I go to my Git graph, it will show me one set of uncommitted changes. Now I need to set up this repository to use Terraform version 1.0.0. And so I need to run my ASDF local on the root of my repository. We know that this command creates tool versions file. And so if I run my Git status, it shows me that that file was created. So I'll go ahead and add this file in my commits. And then I'll run my git commit command. Now if I check my git graph, it shows me two commits in the tree. And if I click on the latest commit, it will show me all the files and directories that are part of that particular commit. Now it's time to make the changes to test the pre-commit git hook. In here, I'll create my very first main.tf and I'll create an empty block for my AWS IAM role. Save my changes, close my explorer, clear my terminal, and now I run my git status again. I've got one change and then commit my change. Just looking at what happened here, it looks like all the Terraform commands that I have set in my custom pre-commit script ran and return failures, which tells me that the pre-commit hook works. And because this failed, nothing has been committed to my local repository. So let me open my git graph. And then the last entry on my tree says uncommitted changes. So let me go ahead and fix this error. The error says argument assume role policy is required. So go back to my terminal, clear this, hit status. Now, the list of unstaged changes show some items in here that I have not made any changes to. So there is the .terraform directory and the .terraform log hcl. These are actually dynamic files and folders that are generated as a result of running Terraform commands. So I don't really need to commit them in my local repository. So what I need to do is create a file called .gitignore in the root of my repository to make sure that all these files are ignored. So let me close my explorer and then run git status again. So now the two Terraform files are gone in my list and all that's left are the files that I know that I've updated. So I'll go ahead and stage these files and then commit my changes. That went through successfully. And now if I open my git graph, I have a new set of commit pushed to my local repository. Up to this point, all my changes are happening locally. And so if I want to make this repository accessible anywhere and from any machine other than the one that I'm using now, I need to persist this local repository somewhere. And this is where I use GitHub. And if you don't have GitHub account, I suggest visiting their website and create an account. So let me open my browser and head to my GitHub account. And then from here, I want to create a new repository. So I'll click the new button in here. And then I'll set the repository name the same as the directory name where my local repository is. So I've set mine to sample, set it to public, 
and then scroll all the way down and click create repository. And then on this page, follow the steps to push an existing repository, which is right here. So let me copy this and then go back to my VS code and paste that command. I'll run git push shoe origin main. And then now if I go back to my browser again and then refresh this page, it will sync up all the files and changes that I've done on my local repository in this remote repository. Now let me go back to my VS Code and then check my Git graph. My main is now synced with my remote because that final commit in there now says main origin. Now I'll make a change in the main.tf and add a description field. Go to my main.tf. Clear this and then I run git status. And then I've got a change in main.tf that needs to be staged. So I got it. And then now I need to commit this change into my local repository. That was successful. Now if I launch my git graph, it shows that I have committed changes in my local repository that is not synced with my remote repository, which is the origin. As you can see, origin main is one commit behind. So what I need to do to sync up both local and remote is to run a git push command. And now git graph shows that my local and remote repository are synced. Now let me go to that repository in my GitHub. So I'll launch my browser and then make sure that the new description field is there. That's it. As usual, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Send me some likes and share this video if you think someone else might find it useful. And last but not the least, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Until next time, see ya.